Entirely. I'll give you one more. This one's even more fun. I studied with Sheikh Abdullah Adhani, who's a great muhaddith, mashallah, may Allah protect him. He's a Syrian scholar. I was studying this hadith with him, in which Umaymah radiallahu ta'ala anha, a woman came to the Prophet and she asked if she could pray in the masjid. And he said, no, you should pray in the innermost part of your home. So don't even pray in the living room, don't even pray in the bedroom, pray in the closet of the bedroom. <laughs> Now some people use this hadith and quote this hadith and say women should not come to the masjid. Because the Prophet said, والسلام, women should pray where? In the innermost part of their home. Okay, let's take a step back a little bit. It's easy to quote the hadith. When a woman is about to go into, hey, 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 don't you know the hadith, it's sahih. I got the name right here. <laughs> if you want I can slap you with it, please go back home. <laughs> now listen. Listen, here's some history. Umaymah was married. And this woman was married to a husband, a sahabi, who was obsessed with her. He was obsessed with her. Actually, you have to re learn the other texts. This woman used to pray at home, and he used to poke her. <laughs> while she was praying. So she came to the Prophet وسلم, and she said, my husband pokes me when I'm praying. <laughs> So the Prophet called him. And he said, well, he called him. And he said, why, why do you poke her when you pray? <laughs> and he said, well, this is a beautiful answer. He says, she stole my surahs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happened? He used to make salah. And she used to pray next to him in Jama'ah. He recited the Quran. She heard it one time, Hafibat al surah. She memorized the surah. And now she's praying on her own. He goes, hey, that was my surah. Hey. <laughs> But let's analyze this psychologically a little bit. He was so obsessed with this woman, even when she was paying attention to God on her own, he got jealous. And he used to poke her. So she said, I should come to the masjid. I should come to the masjid and pray. Now why does she want to come to the masjid and pray? Because she wants to get away from Pokemon. <laughs> so she wants to come to the masjid and pray. Now the, 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 the husband got very upset. No, 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 I don't want her to come to the masjid. If he's so jealous of her, that he gets jealous even when she talks to God, what do you think is going to happen if she goes to the masjid for half an hour? Where is she? She left me, she coming back, she divorced me, she buying a paper. He's going to go crazy. So the Prophet ﷺ told this woman, listen, go in the innermost house, part of your house, and pray there. Why the innermost part of your house? So he can't find you when you're praying. And if you come to the masjid and pray, it might destroy your marriage. So you need to fix your marriage situation first. So this is the advice I'm giving you. Now another group of women, also Sahih Hadith, another group of women come to the Prophet ﷺ and they say, Ya Rasulullah, we come to the masjid for Fajr. And when we come to the masjid for Fajr in Medina, when we come to the masjid for Fajr, we have to walk through sewage. There's a place where there's, you know, sewage is, yes? We have to walk through filth. So our clothes get dirty. So how can we pray when our clothes are dirty? So now what do you expect the Prophet to say? Stay home and pray. The Prophet told them, Alayhi salatu wasalam, don't worry, if your clothes get dirty, the dirt from the rest of the way will clean it up. You still come and pray at the masjid. These are women leaving at 3 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. and you know, 4 a.m. in the morning, walking to the masjid, and they're not driving, they're walking, and it's a long walk. And the Prophet said, you still come and pray in the masjid. Is it true that we read a hadith and we jump to conclusions? We think we know what it means, immediately? Does it require more study? Does it require more analysis? So my advice to you is, if ulama are passing the judgment, if scholars are saying, this people are wrong, those people are wrong, those people are wrong, maybe they have a right to do it because they are scholars. You don't have a right to copy them and judge people. Let them do it, you don't become scholars. You don't become judges. <laughs> be da'is, be callers to Allah, don't be judges. Especially the young people here. If you don't have a son of hadith, if you're not a muhaddif, if you don't have those kinds of ijazat, if you have no qualifications in these texts, then you should not be talking. One time I was sitting in a, in, in a restaurant and there were two brothers together. One brother had a long beard, one brother didn't have a beard. 